My father was actually a graduate student when he started this research in the 1970s. I saw him going out and collecting data, writing things down on his note cards. At the Rocky Mountain Biological Laboratory here in Colorado, there were a few other graduate students who were also interested in wildflowers. And we decided in 1973 to collaborate on a study in which each of us would set up some two by two meter plots and count every flower in those plots. We're still going around to those plots three times a week. Probably some of the same plants that I first started watching 50 years ago now. My trajectory as a biologist was to start doing tropical ecology, and it wasn't until relatively recently in my career that I started working in Colorado again. And that was close to the time that my father was going to be retiring and wanted to turn over this project that he'd started in the 1970s to someone who could carry it forward for a couple more decades. In college, I just loved my biology classes. I got invited by one of my biology professors to be a research assistant at the Rocky Mountain Biological Lab in the summer. That is where I met Brian folk dancing in the dining hall. I went off to graduate school and Brian finished college a couple years after me. We were in graduate school together at Duke University and I got married and that's how it's been ever since. To begin with, we kept our research programs pretty separate, although we have always talked about our work and helped each other with our work. But once we had tenure, we felt we had more freedom to collaborate. Together, we are a more powerful research team than either one of us could be on our own. I think Brian and Nora were excited about the invitation I offered to say, here are these studies with, at that point, 40 plus years of data. Uh, I, at some point, am going to give those projects up, but I think they're worth continuing. And so the last time we wrote a grant proposal to the National Science Foundation, I was no longer the principal investigator, but Nora took on that role. And Brian and I are co-principal investigators along with a a couple of other friends. So it's been great to be able to hand that off. Postdoc Rebecca Prather uh, was the lead author on the article that's talked about in National Geographic magazine that brings together data from a lot of researchers to show that different species in different groups are changing their behavior and their timing at different rates and responding to different cues in the climate. This is the only paper that is all from one location all of these long-term data sets combined. And so we were able to draw novel conclusions that no one else has yet been able to look at. Since they've been collecting this data for so many years, being able to draw on everyone's expertise was really helpful in trying to understand the patterns. It means everything to me that my work life and my family life are so integrated. To have National Geographic cover it, of course, is loads of fun. And also our families, who are not scientists, see that and can recognize it. I think it's indisputable that the climate has been changing, but it's not changing uniformly. In some parts of the world, the climate is changing faster than in other parts of the world. But even in a single location, like our study site in Colorado, the seasons are not changing uniformly. And so species are gonna be changing at different rates. And that means that we're going to start seeing new interactions. Species that didn't interact as much before might interact more now. For society in general, I think it means we need to keep our eyes open. We need to have a bunch of different possible adaptations in mind and be flexible in our responses because we can't predict every change that's going to happen over the next few decades.